In this video, uh, we're going to introduce the idea of improper integrals. Now, these are not the same thing as indefinite integrals. Uh, remember, indefinite integrals do not have bounds, and they basically are just a notation to say we want to do an antiderivative. Improper integrals are where one or both of the bounds is infinite, or there's an infinite discontinuity within the bounds of the integral. Um, and if you remember, we said that when it comes to integrability, that vertical asymptotes cause an issue. But the improper integral is a way for us to start dealing with that. Uh, so what we're going to focus on in this video in the introduction is assuming that these are continuous functions, it's just one or both of the bounds is infinite. And the way we approach this is if, say, the upper bound is in infinity, we want to turn this into a definite integral by replacing infinity with a variable. It just has to be some dummy variable. It doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, so, for example, let's say that for this integral, I replace infinity with C. So my lower bound is still A. I'm still finding it for f of x dx. And now that I have a definite integral, I can find antiderivatives, plug in upper bound, plug in lower bound, and find the difference. In other words, the FTC part two. The way we then take into account that my upper bound should be going towards infinity is remember that infinity is not a number. Infinity is the idea of an ever-increasing number. So we want to say that we're going to take the limit of this integral as C approaches infinity. So instead of dealing with trying to work with infinity as a bound, we replace the infinite bound with a vari dummy variable so that we have a definite integral to evaluate and then take the limit as that dummy variable goes towards infinity. Similarly, if negative infinity is my lower bound, I just replace it, oops, I just replace it with a dummy variable. And again, I'm just going to use C because it's convenient. So that I now have a definite integral that I can evaluate and then do the limit of this integral as C approaches negative infinity. And then the rare case of what if both of my bounds are infinite? Well, the first thing to do is split this up into two integrals using the additivity property for integrals. And I'm just going to say that where they're meeting is at zero because that's a convenient number. It could be any constant number that I use for the additivity. Zero just happens to be a very easy one to work with. And I now have two integrals, such as were my first two examples. So if I replace my infinite bounds with dummy variables, I'm left with finding the limits of two different, I'll use a D for this one, two different definite integrals. And it's not as bad as it seems, but this really is a, a mixture of working with definite integrals, FTC part two, and finding limits and all of the things that we've learned throughout the year on evaluating limits. So an example of this, let's say we wanted to do the integral from one to infinity of, well, that's really one over X with respect to X. I'm going to replace my infinite bound uh, with a dummy variable. I'm just going to use B. So this can be the integral from 1 to B of 1 over x dx. So I now have a definite integral. And then I'm going to do the limit of this as B approaches infinity. So now antiderivative of 1 over x. haven't taken the limit yet, so it stays there. And I derivative 1 over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x. And we're going to evaluate that from 1 to b. So now, because I'm going 1 to bigger positive numbers, I don't need the absolute value here. So again, I haven't found the limit yet, so I still have the limit as b goes to infinity. Plug in the upper bound, and I have the natural log of b. 
minus plugging in the lower bound, natural log of 1. Well, the natural log of 1 is 0, so I don't need to worry about that, and I'm left with the limit as b goes to infinity of the natural log of b. Well, if b is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the natural log also gets bigger and bigger. This is actually infinite, so the limit does not exist.